Hello, sisters. Welcome to the Sacred Medicine Podcast, weaving powerful, soulful practices into functional medicine. Step into this beautiful space of devotion and explore everything from nurturing foods, rituals, sexuality, and awakening your innate sensuality. It is time to own your radiance. This is the Sacred Medicine Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Sacred Medicine Podcast. I am your host, Margaret Romero, and today's guest is Cassandra Bodzak. And uh, this kindred sister of mine, I, you know, when I first heard about her on Elizabeth D'Alto's podcast months ago, and I went online and I checked her out, I'm like, Oh my God, she does so many things that I love to do as well. So I knew I had to have her on the podcast. So let's see, we dive into all the things that she did to manifest her new love partner. And these things, I mean, you have got to listen to this part. If you're single and you are looking to manifest your next man or woman partner, whatever, you have to listen in on this. We also dive into her cookbook, which is so unique because it combines mantras and meditation with the recipes. So, so cool. So I can't wait till that comes out. Uh, we also, uh, jam a little bit on, you know, doing what really lights you up because that's what she's all about. And that's like her mission in life. So let me tell you a little bit more about her. Cassandra is a global meditation wellness guide, a spiritual mentor, author, and speaker. She's also a certified Kundalini yoga instructor, as well as the host of Mindful Eating Show called Eat With Intention TV. On to the interview. Thank you, Cassandra, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Well, I first heard about you on Liz D'Alto's podcast. There was something that you mentioned towards the end of that interview that really struck with me, actually, and it's been on my mind ever since. And it was something that you mentioned about relationships. And it was something you said, well, you know, if I said that I wanted to create a book, then there's actions and there's steps to doing that. You can even hire a coach and have your, you know, help with your book. But when it comes to manifesting or desiring, let's say a potential love partner, um, why is it so different? People sort of tell you, well, you know, when the time is right, they'll just sort of come into your life and you don't have to worry about it. It'll just happen. And so I'm curious to know if what has happened between then and now, and if you've gotten any answers to that question or if anyone sort of addressed that with you? Cause I'm really curious myself being a single woman and also being told the same things. I mean, if I wanted to create this podcast, for example, there were people that I needed to hire and there were things that I needed to do and research that I needed to look into. Though when it comes to love, it's completely a different kind of concept. I'm curious if you've had any revelations since then. I have. Actually, I totally forgot about that. Um, and I am now very happily in a relationship with mm. a fantastic man. And um, at some point after that podcast is recorded, I I think I had a revelation of sorts and I'm not, I don't remember quite when it happened, but really realizing where I had focused my energy and I have always been in and out of relationships. I've never, you know, I haven't been chronically single or anything like that. Um, my longest out of a relationship was during that period, pretty much before I left for LA after I knew I was going to leave, um, New York six months before you know, my lease was up and all the logistics were coming through. And then once I got to LA, um, 
And the first six months were very intentional because I didn't want to get attached to anyone in New York before I moved to L.A. And then once I got to L.A., I guess I, I just expected it to happen right away. And I just, you know, I put myself out there and... But the thing I that I eventually realized was that my real energy, my real focus was always at my work. And that's just, I mean, that's kind of who I am in a way. Um, I'm really passionate about what I do, and it's really easy for me to get caught up in just doing what I do. And I realized that I needed to, you know, when I wanted to take my work to the next level and I wanted to like you said write a book or do a podcast or update something that I'm offering you know what do I do I call in mentors I read books about it I I devote some time Mm -hmm. and energy into like up leveling my actions around it right and and I realized I wasn't really doing that when it came to relationships I was just saying like, Hey, well, I'm here. (laughs) I'm gonna get me. I'm a catch. (laughs) And, um, while that's great and all (laughs) the, um, the work that it took was really me being honest with myself and being like, you know what, this is something that adds value to my life just as much as my work. Um, this is something that I want. And what I did was, um, there's a Kundalini meditation called so perk, um, which is for, you know, it's for either healing relationships between a man and woman. It's a woman's prayer for a man. And so if you have a man in your life and maybe your relationship's going through a difficult time, it's a great, um, meditation or mantra to play during that time. But it's also really powerful to call in your man. So I started incorporating that into my daily spiritual routine because, you know, for, if, if nothing for more than the fact that it, symbolized that I was ready and that I was willing to create a space for that. And then I also looked at my life and, um, there was this beautiful exercise that, you know, one of my friends who coaches on relationships taught me was just going through my, even my apartment and saying, you know, is this like man friendly (laughs) and you know just little things like having nice uh you know end tables next to my bed with like candles and stuff like that and making sure that there wasn't like (laughs) books on the side of the bed that the guy would sleep on Mm -hmm. and um just little things like that like if my dream man came in tomorrow would like you know, he'd be like, welcome in my home or whatnot. It was just little things like that. And just being open to it. Um, and then really just surrendering it at the end of the day, it was, you know, it's kind of like with anything with like a book, I'm going through a book launch right now. And it's very similar where you put, you know, you do your side of the street, you clean up your side of the street, you take a, you know, a look at where are the areas where I'm not showing up fully where I could, you know, for me, it was what are the areas where I'm being too masculine, where I'm not in my feminine, when I'm like always turned on with work and not turned on softer with my feminine energy all the time. And when I did that, then it was okay. I, I did it my side of the street and it was continuously holding that space uh, one of the other action steps that came with that was also being conscious about, um, oh, am I creating space in the evening? Cause I would be someone that would work straight through until like nine or 10 and then read a book and fall asleep. And I realized that I really needed to create that evening space. Even if there wasn't a man there, I needed to shut the laptop off at eight and, you know, take a bubble bath, have a cup of tea, go out to dinner with my girlfriends, whatever it was, like get into a different space in the evening. Um, so I did all that and I surrendered it and I just kept on showing up for whatever was in front of me and kept on going on dates and being open to meet new people. And I actually had met my boy, my now boyfriend, um, in January and we had just kind of stayed in touch loosely as friends. Um, and then once I really kind of like stepped in to my power in that way, um, I think unconsciously kind of like took the cue to step up a little bit. (laughs) Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it, yeah, and it's amazing. And, uh, yeah, he's, and he's wonderful and it's a great, it's one of like the best relationship I've ever had. Oh my God. That's amazing. And were you doing like online dating or were you just being set up by friends? Um, the, I met my boyfriend by, when I moved to California, I would have a bunch of my girlfriends from the East coast visit me. So one of my, uh, girlfriends, Nitika was staying with me for a week and she threw a party and invited everybody she knew in California and told them to bring everybody that they knew, especially men. <laughs> what a great idea. <laughs> so that was fun. I mean, I tried online dating for like a week and it was just not for me. Um, I don't think there's abs- I don't think there's anything wrong with it at all. I think um, it's definitely a powerful way um, to put out into the universe that you're ready, that you're open to it. Um, and I think online dating just from an energetic perspective can be really good because if you're, if you're in an area where it's, you know, you're in a career that is not so easy to meet people or mingle, you're not constantly in new places. Um, then it's a great way to just put it out to the universe. Even just like starting little conversations and being a little flirty puts that energy that you're ready to like attract that kind of energy back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I I think I, I believe that's true as well. Um, so tell me what's been going on. You've, you've got, you're doing, it seems like you're so incredibly busy and (laughs) you also started doing a, it's been a while now, um, your Facebook live as well. How's that going? Oh, I love that. Um, I actually just got back from Mexico. So I took this past week off, but I'm going to do one today and I'm super excited about it. Um, I love that. That was something that I'm a big, big believer that you have to do what lights you up. And if, you know, in my whole life, I've kind of been, regardless of where my path was, <laughs> I've always been kind of like, well, if you're not going to give it to me, I'm just going to take it <laughs> <laughs> when, when it comes to, you know, doing what I love. And so for the past, um, you know, after I was on the taste, I got some offers from production companies for different TV shows and nothing really felt aligned mm-hmm. with the message that I really feel called to bring and the integrity that I feel called to have in any sort of show I'm going to do. And so I kind of just shelved that want and that desire for a while. And then this past year it's come up more than ever. And it's something that I truly, truly deeply want. Um, and I believe eat with intention is the kind of cooking show of the future where it's not just teaching you how to make a recipe. It's giving you life advice. It's giving you mindfulness tips. It's help helping you learn how to relate to your body, to your, you know, your whole existence. Um, so I, wrote up, you know, I had already the treatment that I, what I wanted to kind of do with the show. And I was like, how can I, let me just condense this and do it on a Facebook live. And I'm going to do it two times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And it's going to be something that is me again, just putting out to the universe that, Hey, this is what I want to do. And I cannot even tell you how much it lights me up. Like it takes me probably an hour to set up my kitchen for it and Mm -hmm. to set up like cameras and the lights and like the whole nine yards every Tuesday and Thursday. And, and then maybe the show's like 15, 20 minutes. I try to keep it short for Facebook and I'm walking on sunshine all day because of it. Because I just love doing it (laughs) so much. And I don't make any money off it. And it's not like, I'm not, you know, there's no big game, like game plan slash strategy with it, really. It's just, this is something that I want to create and I want to put out in the world. And the fact that I get to do that on any level is incredible and makes me feel so wonderful and connected to why I'm truly here. Mm. Wow. That's so great. And you do, you have also a, a book coming out. Is that what I've heard? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I have a book coming out by the same name, Eat With Intention. Mm. And, um, it is, again, it's, you know, it's kind of the way I feel like a cookbook should be going where it's not really a cookbook. It's a lifestyle guide. And it was the most magical way is how this book came about. This, with intention, has been so 
Um, it's just been one of those babies that have been so magical the whole way. Just the whole idea for the show. Um, I first got the whole idea for Eat With Intention. And the show and the book are very similar. It's just different formats. Um, but the whole idea for the concept when I was really, you know, in the middle of like getting those offers and kind of being like frustrated and like, why, you know, why doesn't anybody get what I want to do? <laughs> and I, I did this long Kundalini meditation called Ekong Cars, if anybody's familiar mm. with that. And yes. I got this huge flood and it just flow, like flowed through me about this is what the show is going to be like and you have to create this. And that was how like the first like season, which is not Facebook Live, which is just regularly recorded in a kitchen studio, um, got created. And then the next one came out when I was at Wanderlust again in like a Kundalini class. And really wondering, you know, if I should, I was in the middle of writing a memoir, um, and, and just wondering how I should incorporate food in it. And then the idea for eat with intention, the book came through where it was, you know, kind of this manual for getting back into a conversation and a relationship with our bodies and making peace with it and learning how to love and accept your body and release all the negative self-talk and take your power back instead of giving, you know, your power to all these fad diets or nutritional theories that people come out with every five seconds and bring it back to you and having that conversation with your body about what it wants to nourish it and, what it wants rest wise, how much does it want to sleep? What does it want exercise? You know, does it want yoga today? Does it want strength training today? Like, what does it want actually asking it instead of, you know, you know, signing up for what somebody else is telling you to do. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe through that process, at least in my experience, but I know in a lot of the people I've worked with experience too, once we start that process, then we tune into something much bigger then we really start tuning into our intuition. Then we learn how to listen to our body's signals and signs um, and that our body can be a great, you know, a great um, compass for navigating our life. And so I really wanted to, you know, spell that out for people and give them the tools and, and the daily rituals to incorporate into their lives to really have that expansive experience so that they can leave you know, lead that life that they desire because so much of that starts with your relationship with you. Right. And then the other half of the book is, um, <clears throat> it's my favorite. It's kind of, I call it a kitchen Oracle because it's, uh, different mantras. There are 75 different mantras and they're all English mantras that I've created. So something like, uh, you know, I'm loved and supported or, you know, something I, you know, I step into my magic and each I mantra, love that. Oh. Yeah. It's so fun. Um, <laughs> each mantra has a meditation and a recipe that are energetically aligned with the, the mantra. Oh, so my goal is that something that like sits on your kitchen counter and when, whether you need like a, sh- like a little shot of inspiration or you're looking for a new meditation to do cause you're in like a whatever, you know, you want inspiration or creativity or you're frustrated or you want focus, you know, you can look up, okay, I have like a focus potion juice and there's a meditation for focus next to it. Um, and so, yeah, so when I got approached for the book deal, I pitched them this and I, I was like, oh my God, they're going to think I'm a total wackadoodle. Nobody's going to like sign on for this book because nobody d- has done anything like this by like a convention right. publisher right. at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and my publisher got so excited and they were just like, nobody's doing this, but this is exactly what people need. And I knew that it was, you know, meant to be for me to work with them. And, uh, I'm so excited for people to get their hands on this book. Cause I think it's, you know, it's going to really be something that I hope that you give to your best friend, that you give to your sister, that you keep throughout the years is something that you can always come back to. That sounds amazing. Yes. I have not heard of anyone doing this and to combine it with a cookbook. 
it just sounds like all the things that I love in one, I've never had anyone putting in a meditation or mantras in a cookbook that I've at least ever seen, but that sounds amazing. I'm definitely going to have, get this book when, when does it come out. Tell me when it comes, it comes out. out November 15th. Oh, okay. Nice. And where can they buy it? Anywhere, everywhere? Everywhere books are sold. You can pre-order it on Amazon. And for uh, there's some special bonuses and workshops for people that pre-order at Amazon. So I can set you up with that oh, link nice. as well. Yes. We'll definitely put that in the show notes. Great. Well, tell me a little bit about, um, I'd love to know some of your own sort of daily rituals that you do. Do you have like a morning ritual or a night ritual? Tell me what that looks like a little bit. Mm, I'm a ritual queen. Uh, (laughs) So many rituals. Um, Yeah. Um, So my morning ritual is, you know, I wake up, I meditate first thing. Um, I do, I, you know, I do uh, both Vedic meditation and Kundalini meditation. So I do like a mantra for 20 minutes and then I'll do a Kundalini meditation. Um, And then I make myself uh, some sort of hot beverage. Lately, it's been this uh, dandelion root blend, which is kind of like simulates coffee, but it's tea. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, I've been making that with some, you know, I'll put uh, brain dust in it from moon juice and some other like, you know, maybe chaga or some other fun like superfood powders and coconut milk. And that is my little my little cup of tea and then I like to sit and I, you know, will go over what I have to do for the day. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much it for the morning. Sometimes I'll journal. Um, recently I've had a lot of early morning kind of calls and stuff like that. So it gets a little bit shortened. Um, but I always do at least that that's like bare minimum. And, um, at night, like I said, I do try, um, after the sun goes down, the, the apartment becomes a different place <laughs> and I am either making dinner for my boyfriend or we'll go out to dinner or I will, you know, take a bath and read a book or I go out with my friends. And then, um, at night before I wind down, I really, I like to white light candles and, um, I have like an essential oil diffuser in my bedroom and I just like to wind down and read a book or, um, or sometimes I will, <laughs> but I've tried to, I, me and my boyfriend, I've tried to get him into, which he's now really enjoying, um, is channel writing before bed. Oh, so, tell me about that. So we'll just kind of like, you know, meditate for a little bit and then tune in to, you know, our guardian angels or whoever, um, you can channel write with your higher self or the universe or whoever you want to channel write with. Um, but I like talking to my guardian angels and, um, and just meditate and kind of call them in and, and then you just journal and you write down, you know, anything you're, you know, if you have a particular question or if you just in general want some guidance on anything around, something that's going on and you just kind of allow your pen to do whatever it does. Mm. Um, and it's kind of, you know, it's hard to explain, but if you really give yourself over to it, uh, it's fairly, I think it's fairly easy. Um, and it's really just kind of, you know, you're surprised at what comes out and like even the way that things come out. Um, and for me, that's always really fun. And I know that that's just a higher part of my consciousness coming through right. to illuminate something that maybe I'm not seeing with my earthly eyes, let's say. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I actually have done this before. I, I never called it channel writing before. So that's a new term for me, but I have done this and it's actually, I don't know if it's ever done this to you, but it's actually, um, j- I don't know very tearful to see what comes out on paper Mm -hmm. to see what you're being sort of guided or told or, you know, the response from one of your questions. And for me, I can, I, I'll, you know, it's just coming out on paper. You sort of almost don't have control over your pen. You don't really even know. Right. Do you know what I mean? You don't really, my handwriting is totally different. Right. You don't, you're not thinking about the words that are going down on paper. That's a little hard to explain, right? Yeah. Yeah. You just let whatever comes out, comes out. And, 
you know, that's, I think the magic of it. Like you said, it's, it's one of those things where people always ask, well, how do you know? Like, it's not just like you making up answers to you. I mean, in an essence it is right. It's just a higher form of you, but, True. um, but you know that it's not really like you consciously making it up because you'll often be surprised or taken aback or yes. I always find that like I, I speak to myself way more lovingly <laughs> mm-hmm. yes. than, than I would probably consciously do if I was creating. Yes. You know, and uh, I, what I really love is that your man is into it and he doesn't think it's weird or crazy or anything. And that's amazing. Did he was he because it look it sounds like you guys meditate together as well and ha, has he always been open to it or did you introduce him to this world? He he's a functional medicine doctor. Um okay. so he's you know, he's kind of in the alternative world. Um and he's on in his personal path has explored meditation and you know, kind of we joke around that like I talk about my default is talking about the energy of things. That's just kind of how I relate to the world. And he understands the energy of things, but from a more scientific place. Right. Um, so he actually, you know, we have a lot of fun because a lot of things that I just know from an intuitive level, he actually knows from a scientific level. Um, and he's like looked at the research and he can like prove these things that like I just, you know, can't really explain. I'm like, well, I just know this happens. And, (laughs) um, and so he's been open in that way, but I wasn't really until that he was meditating a little bit when we first started dating and it wasn't really until, um, I'm a big believer that the woman has a lot of power and I say power in a really good way. Um, in, oh, with the man in that, in that aspect of the relationship. I almost feel it as like, that's kind of like the, the fort we hold down in a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Where we, we bring the mystical, we bring the magical, we bring that sacred spiritual, um, part. And so it's very nice for a man yes. to get to enjoy that. I agree. And my boyfriend really, you know, what happened was when he honest, honestly, you know, when he first started sleeping over and we were spending more time together, um, I would be like, you know, babe, like I got to go meditate, you know? <laughs> um, and he was like, okay, like, let me come with you. Let me, you know, like, do you mind? Like, you know, the first few times he just let me go off and do my thing. I was like, okay. And, um, and then we started meditating together. Mm-hmm. And I ta- I've taught him a bunch of different meditations and um, given him some Kundalini meditations and we'll, we'll do them together a lot of the time, but now he can also do it. Now he does it on his own as well. Um, and he's really open to it. He's really, um, I think that's one of the things I really love about him is that I think there are definitely moments where he's like, Oh my God. Wow. Like you're, <laughs> you're so weird, but, <laughs> but I love, but I love it anyway. And, um, and he's open to hearing about past lives and my crystals. And I bring him to breath work. Um, that's actually how we first started seeing each other. Um, after being friends for a while, if anybody doesn't know what breath work is, it's, you know, it's a pretty intense breathing process that essentially it's, you know, you breathe in your diaphragm, you breathe in your heart center, um, through your mouth and you exhale and it brings up all of these, you know, emotions and moves energy like crazy. And I brought him to my friend Madeline who teaches angelic breath work in Venice. So it's different, like, oh, yes, I've heard of her. she's amazing. You mm-hmm. definitely, um, I love her. So I brought him to Madeline's class. Madeline's a close friend of mine, and I love it. And it was almost just like, all right, let's see if this guy, you know, <laughs> can handle it. <laughs> and he loved it. Um, and he was so open to it. And he really didn't, like, get so much of the, like, angel stuff she was talking about. Uh-huh. But he was, like, really open to the experience. Um and then like kept on going back. So yeah. So I do think it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely been me holding down the fort for it, but he's been super receptive and 
really like open to whatever I hold the space for. Great. I love that. By the way, going back to what you were saying about your AM rituals, you mentioned something called brain dust. Mm, I'm intrigued. What is that? So it's from the moon juice shop. So moon juice shop, I believe you can order from them in Venice. Um, I mean, they have a place in Venice, but you can order from them online. And they have all these different adaptogen powders. Oh, cool. And so there's, like, brain dust, spirit dust, beauty dust, all different kinds of dust. (laughs) And there are these cute little powders that have, you know, different mixes of adaptogens. And so brain dust is just something that, you know, that helps you with, like, focus and alertness and whatnot that I put it in my non-coffee beverage in the morning. (laughs) Oh, great. I'm going to look into that for sure, and I'll include that in the show notes as well. And one of the really cool things that I also saw that you do is that you do some, you do a moon ritual meditation in California twice a month for the new moon and the full moon, right? Yeah. Oh my God. So tell me about, I now I, I do this typically on my own and I also haven't found, I am still new to Connecticut. haven't found my tribe as of yet officially. Um, been thinking about maybe just doing my own moon rituals and I do have a meetup group and maybe inviting them, but tell me how, you know, tell me a little bit about that and how many people show up and, and do you sort of astrologically talk about what, you know, it's the significance of that particular moon for the, either the new or the full moon that month, you know, what it's all about. Do you talk about that a little, or tell me a little bit more? Yeah. So first of all, my new moons are always available, uh, like live online. Um, so I do, I do, you know, I probably, I have for the new moons, I have people, um, over in Santa Monica and we usually fill up the space with around like 15 to 20 people. And, um, it's a pretty small space, but it's pretty. And, um, and then we'll have anywhere, you know, up to like a couple hundred joining us online from all over the world. Um, so that's really magical because it's just like this feeling of all of us gathering together. And then there's a meditation studio called Unplug Meditation here in LA that has adopted me for full moon workshops. <laughs> and so I'll be leading them my full moon workshops there starting uh, this month on October 16th. And so we'll see, you know, they have a much bigger space so we can fit, you know, upwards of 50 people in that room. Um, and yeah, and I love astrology. Um, it's kind of just something that I personally love. It's mm-hmm. not necessarily, it's something I incorporate with all my clients. Like I just notice it so much, you know, I work with so many women one-on-one and you begin to notice trends, <laughs> you know, when you talk to like, you know, yesterday I had seven clients and they all have different, you know, scenarios that are going on, but there are like themes that come up. And it's always, it's always been so interesting for me how those themes show up with people Mm -hmm. from all different parts of the world, all different ages, all different situations, but like the theme themes. Um, and then a few years back I started just taking a real interest in astrology because of Kundalini yoga, which focuses a lot on the significance of the different positions of the moon and the planets and how that affects our psyche and our body and everything. And so I started correlating the two and I was like, wow, I can really kind of tell what my clients are going to be going through when, because of the astrology. And then I started you know, telling my clients a little bit about the astrology and that things would come up. And I, you know, I just noticed how much comfort it gave them to know that, you know, not only is it totally normal for them to be feeling whatever they're feeling or whatever they're going through at that point, but so many other people are having this come up for them as well. Right. Um, and it kind of makes you feel like, oh, okay, like I'm not crazy. Like this is fine. You know, this is just what like I'm going through right now in the cyclical of the planet. And, um, so that's kind of how I fell into it. And I just kind of, you know, if you worked with me one-on-one, uh, you, you would know that I was into it and always like letting you know what's going on in the planets as it was appropriate. Um, but 
I got to a point where I was going to a couple of moon circles. I was floating around with different moon circles <laughs> and nothing was really like doing it for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I just need to create my own because I want to make it super magical. <laughs> and cool. so I created my own and I listened to like probably like 10 different uh, astrologers I really respect. I take copious notes on like all the different aspects and what's going on. Um, and then I meditate on it and I kind of let myself be guided towards, I'll select usually around four meditations to let lead people through along with like guided journaling exercises. Um, or perhaps it's a, like a guided visualization or something like that, depending on what Um, we're creating so they're really unique and they're super super focused on the energy that's going on during that new moon um because for me i get i've you know with new moons it's always like creating you know setting intentions and putting that out there and with full moons it's always completions and letting go right and you know that's great and all but there's so much more to each moon um and when we really tap into all the different transits that are going on and the different you know this particular sign that the moon is in then it's not just it's not just letting go. It's okay. Like, what are you letting go? If this is a full moon in Libra, you know, or whatever, you know? Right. So it's super fun. And it's, again, it's one of those things that I really doesn't, you know, I don't know if it necessarily fits into the overall scheme of my business, but I love it. And I have so much fun. So I'm just going to keep doing it. (laughs) I love it. I mean, I'm so into doing what you love. So whatever, you know, brightens your day or night, I would, definitely keep doing it. Plus new moon rituals are awesome. They're just, yeah. If I, I mean, I do them personally and I think the energy would probably be very different, um, being in a circle or leading one as well. And so you've just sort of sparked my inspiration a little bit towards maybe putting one together. Yeah. Thinking about, yeah, doing that. So there's so much power in gathering. Yes. Yes, for sure. So tell me a little bit about, um, I know you also have a pre and that's something that's sort that's somewhat new as well. That's just come out. I, Cause I do follow you on Instagram as well. Yeah. Tell us about so, that. Oh, pre is my, like, I feel like it's like my life project. <laughs> um, It's something that I've wanted to create pretty much since I started in this business. Um, I just, when I first started out, I had less than no money. I was, you know, making, you know, making do with like $20 workshops and $30 classes here and there and YouTube videos and reading every book I could get my hands on. And I would, you know, talk to mentors and coaches and I would constantly find that like their rates were so expensive. And I always kind of promised myself that when the time came, when I could, I wanted to be able to offer something that was affordable, that someone could really feel like they were being, you know, held the space for that they were getting the inspiration and the guidance they need, the resources they needed and the community that they desperately want. When you begin on your spiritual path and, you know, living in Santa Monica, you can be spoiled with, you know, kind of how prevalent it is here and same thing in New York. But as someone that is also pretty introverted and, and not, you know, going to necessarily like, really push, you know, kind of trying to like make friends when you're just kind of exploring this whole thing. I wanted a safe community where people could really come and feel like they could connect with people. Um, and so appreciate was something that I had my heart set on for a while. Um, because of course I work with one-on-one clients, but that has to be a little bit more expensive because it's my time and there's only so much of it. And, I knew that I wanted ultimately something that I could serve on a much larger scale and could really, you know, 
to give those same tools to a lot of people. So Appreciative was born finally. Um, and it was like nine months in the making and it's just this, it's an online mind, body, soul support community. And you have, we just had our October intensive coaching workshop last month. And I mean, last month, last night, (laughs) um, (laughs) last night. And we have two intensive online coaching workshops each month, um, with different themes and we have a live Q and a call and, those are always just amazing. Like everybody gets on and they're asking me questions and they're jamming with each other as well. And it's really fun. We have a forum where everybody kind of lets, you know, updates people when they're like going through a rough patch or they need some guidance or cheers other people on shares about their ahas. Um, And, of course, there are recipes that are updated every month. There is a meditation library. There's a library of all of my workshops that you have access to. Uh So, yeah. So, Appreciative is just one of those. For me, it was a project that I just felt so called to create because I'm a big, big believer that um, you shouldn't have to pay a fortune to have a community, to be on the path and to, you know, have that space where you can go and and really recharge and realign and, and be around people that are there to support you. Nice. I love that. Okay. So let's see. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Um, let's see how we're doing on time. Was there anything, tell me a little bit, you know, I wanted to get down into a little bit some questions about, um, food and your new book that's coming out. So here on the East coast, it's fall and it's starting to get much cooler. And so we're in the fifties and sixties. And for someone like me, who's gluten-free, primarily dairy-free, somewhat paleo, um, and really big into like some, some raw and, and whole foods and, you know, eating somewhat clean when it comes to now the fall time, I find it really hard to continue to do salads and shakes or, um, anything cold. Like I'm, I'm really big into warm and soups and things like that. Do you have any recommendations for, I know you're, you're in California and so it's probably warm the majority of the time. Do you have, when you lived in New York, like, what did you do? I just feel like I, I just want to stay home and have like, I don't know, lasagna. Do you know what I mean? Like some kind of comfort food that's warm. Like I'm turned off. I'm so turned off now by like another salad. I can't, I I feel (laughs) so cold. Um, any recommendations for us East coasters? (laughs) <laughs> you supposed to do I, I was one of you for a very long time. Yeah. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. Like, first of all, listen, right? Like don't, uh, the, the fall and the winter is not the time for you to be juicing or eating salads all the time or, you know, stuff like that. It's just not what your body's naturally craving. Um, so listen to what your body's natural craving and, you know, in where you would have maybe a salad for lunch, maybe have a vegetable, like veggie soup. Um, uh, the book has a uh, lentil veggie soup that I love. It has cauliflower, um, apple soup that I love, um, has a nice, uh, creamy roasted red pepper made with, uh, cashews to keep it creamy. Um, a tomato soup. Like, I'm a soup girl. Um, great. There's this even a spinach artichoke soup. Um, <laughs> I, really I love, love it. Um, I, you know, there's so many soups. There's also the, uh, the Thai soup that I really love, the Tom Ka soup. It's like a coconut milk soup mm-hmm. with gas in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, all vegan, but I say, I say, listen to that, right? Um, make yourself soup, make that be your thing. Um, and you know, what I started doing salad wise too, when I was in New York is I would make what I call quote unquote, like cooked salads. So I would do, um, you know, I would like roast potatoes and slice them up real thin and maybe saute some broccoli and like cook onions and garlic and then maybe throw it all on top of like a bed of spinach, 
you know, but having a lo- like primarily the salad be cooked. Right. Um, okay. And that was something that I'm still really a big fan of doing because my body just in general doesn't digest all raw foods that well. It likes mostly cooked foods. Mm -hmm. Uh (laughs) Um, So I think that's great. And also, you know, this whole Yogi Bowl concept I'm obsessed with. I love uh, there's a Yogi Bowl in the book, but it's, you know, pretty much the fact that like we can throw out having to, especially for lunches. um, But I mean, I do it for dinner as well. Like, you know, let's throw out this concept that it has to be some sort of like fancy creation. You know, you can, you know, cook up some quinoa, have some nice like black beans, slice up avocado, steam some vegetables like that can be a delicious lunch. Um, And just having, you know, you can even piece that together with some leftovers. If you made like Brussels sprouts with dinner last night and you had leftovers, okay, let's put some Brussels sprouts and some brown rice and like what else do we want to throw in there, you know? Um and kind of get creative with it that wise. I also am a big, big fan of, uh, like squash pasta. So whether it's spaghetti squash or, um, making like zucchini noodles or Mm -hmm. pumpkin, um, pumpkin. Um, so really utilizing the root vegetables. That yes, what I would do, like learn, like play with all of your root vegetables. I'm a big fan of going to the supermarket and trying to find something that I've never cooked before (laughs) and messing around with it and being like, I don't know how to cook this squash, but you know, now we have Google. So (laughs) you can look up like three different ways to cook that squash in like five minutes. Um, and, and having some fun with exploring new fall flavors. My opinion, fall in the East coast is like the best season ever. (laughs) (laughs) It is. It is. It really is. It's beautiful. Um, though I'm not, I'm not a winter kind of girl to begin with. So I tend to, I mean, I'm very, I'm an introvert. And so it makes me even more introverted than usual. (laughs) So what I do is I stay home and I cook and, um, you just give me some really good ideas. So I cannot wait for your book. I am definitely going to do the uh, pre-order for sure. Yay. And, um, as we wrap up this call, was there anything that you wanted to talk about or, um, let my listeners know anything having to do with food or rituals or anything like that? Well, you know, I, I just, you know, I want to always bring it back to what, just remembering that it's it's all about taking your power back and c- tuning in and connecting and doing those things, regardless of how weird they sound to other people, <laughs> doing those things that really connect you to your inner guidance. And whether that is asking your body what it wants to eat um, today or journaling before you go to bed, in your meditation pra- practice, so whether it's taking a walk outside and connecting with nature or doing an art project, um, that the, you know, the most important thing you can do is to connect back to that space because at the end of the day, you know, the answers you need and the guidance that you seek are always inside and the best teachers that you ever find will just help you find better ways to get back inside. <laughs> mhm. Mhm. Absolutely. So a couple of quick questions that I like to yeah. end the call with. Um what is your biggest or most favorite indulgence whether that's a food or um like what is mm. or shoes or <laughs> how many massages. Many, <laughs> oh, massages. <laughs> Yes. I love me a nice massage with like aromatherapy and like Mm. all all the, all the bells and whistles. Oh, good. (laughs) Good. And what is currently at your bedside right now? Mm. Um, I have like four different candles, Mm -hmm. um, on my bedside table, a white mala and, um, the book that I was reading is Doreen's Doreen Virtues, Assertiveness for Earth Angels. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I haven't heard of that one. Okay. And 
What's your astrological sign? I am a Pisces with an Aries rising. What's your moon? Do you know? Capricorn. Okay. Interesting. My moon is in Pisces. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that so fits you too with all the things that you do. Um, and then you've got this rising in Aries that puts everything into action. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think if I didn't have the other two, if I didn't have Capricorn and Aries in there, my Pisces would probably just like, I, you know, be out to sea probably. I dream all day <laughs> and do nothing about it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, I'm such a, so much, you know, cookie cutter Pisces. I'm very, 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 very daydreaming and very, very romantic. And, um, mm. I definitely need that little bit of Aries fire to get me going. <laughs> yes, for sure. All right. Well, how can we find you? Tell us all the places where you are. All the places. I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me on Instagram at Cassandra Bodzak, on Facebook at Cassandra Bodzak, on Twitter, same thing. Um, you can watch episodes of Eat With Intention live on my Facebook at Cassandra Bodzak or on my YouTube channel, which is uh, youtube.com Cassandra Bodzak uh, TV. And I will give you guys the link for the pre-order bonuses. And I'll also give you guys a link for a free trial of Appreciative if anybody is interested and wants to give it a risk-free whirl. Um, oh, nice. I'd love to have you guys. Thank you. But yeah, I'm pretty much everywhere. You can just find me by my name. <laughs> I try to keep it simple. <laughs> All right. Well, I have loved getting to know you this way. Um it has been such a pleasure to interview you today. I wish you so much luck on this cookbook that's coming out. This is so exciting and so amazing. And just all the fun things that you do, um, your moon circles and the Facebook live and that you do this, the cooking show. And, um, I love it. I love food. I love cooking as well. So I hear you on all these things and appreciate it. Sounds amazing. So I'm going to check that out as well. And thank you for all the links and we will chat thank soon, sister. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. This was lovely. I am so excited and happy that we did this. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for listening. And to learn more about Cassandra, you can find all the show notes at margaretromero.com forward slash episode three. And to continue this conversation, join our private Facebook group at margaretromero.com forward slash Facebook. <laughs>